gonna press play. Okay, we got this kind of not that cool sounding uh, progression and let's fix it. The way that I do it is this. Thanks to the magic of Logic Pro, as soon as you double click on this region, let me let me let me draw a line. This area over here, this uh, a green area, it's called a region. Okay, if you double click on it, you're gonna be granted with this. This is the piano roll, and in here you can change and move around the notes that you played uh, during your performance. Okay, so first thing, this is gonna be a problem. Let me zoom in. This area is going to be problematic because, as you can see, the MIDI note or the little rectangle over there, it's outside of the boundaries of this uh, red line, uh, sorry, this green line. And this green line is representing the whole scope of the size of the region. So, in, a simple, ter in simple terms, as long as you have something outside of this line, it's not going to be played. That note is not going to be played. Let me show it to you. I'm going to press uh, enter to bring back the playhead to the beginning of the track and you will see what happens. As you can see, it's outside of the uh, line that represents the playhead. I'm going to press play and you will see. Ha! <laughs> Nothing happened. Why? I'm glad that you didn't ask. The reason is because it's outside, as I said. So, the solution, the, how to fix it, it's quite simple. It's just a matter of going there, pressing and dragging the note to the beginning of the region. And if I press play, and now I want to change this note. Yeah, good. Done. So what happened there, girls and boys? One of the many things that are cool about MIDI is that you can change or you can fix any of your mistakes. That's the reason why you got this piano roll. And as you heard, as soon as I selected and clicked on one of the notes, I started to drag it around and I got a different sound. Why? Because I was changing the pitch, which is changing the notes, which means that I fixed my mistakes and I got a completely different chord progression. Let me show it to you. Good. We got a problem here, and as you can see, it's quite obvious because here, this is not following the same tempo. It's out of tempo. So how to fix it? It's gonna be by clicking once again and dragging the note to the beginning and the end of that bar. There you have it, or much. Now we got a proper chord progression. Let's see how it sounds like now. working. Now, what are we going to do first? I'm going to add some drums to the sound of our uh, project. How to do it is quite simple. We're going to go over here and if I click in this little uh, plus sign, bam, we're going to get this. In here I'm going to select a drummer and I am feeling like having a kind of an electronic drummer and this is something that is exclusive to Logic Pro. So here we go. Then I'm going to create and we're going to get this gigantic track. And what is that? That's a drummer track. I want first to make sure that you can hear it. So what I'm going to do is going to change the output of this guy. And now you should be able to hear the sound of the drums. Let's see. Yes, you can hear it now. So it's quite loud. It's extremely loud. Uh, but um, by loud I mean the bass. So I'm gonna lower the volume of the bass. Nice, we got it. From there, I want to make this region a loop. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna click here and bam, we're gonna get this yellow section. This yellow section means that the playhead is going to start at the beginning of this yellow section and it's going to go until this area and then it's going to go back to the beginning. So that way we can have a continuous loop. 
So, you might be wondering, why on earth would I like to do that in such an early stage of this song? That's a great question, and I'm glad you didn't ask. This is what is going to happen, girls and boys. I created this, uh, this, this, this uh, drum track just to have the foundation of the rhythmic section. We, because I am going to start to sculpt a completely new, out of nowhere sound using this synthesizer. Okay, girls and boys. So here we go. Let me confirm that you can see the whole interface. Yes, you can see it now. And of course, uh, the whole point of this uh, live stream is for you to be able to ask me anything. So if anything that happens in front of you while we are working in this project, and you don't understand what happened of if you had any question, let me know, okay? So here we go. So, what I want to show you is this. We're going to explore the different sections of a uh, 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 synthesizer. And every synthesizer is going to follow the same principles. You're going to get an oscillator, like this, which is going to be where the sounds are going to be generated. Then you're going to get a mixer, like this, which is where you're going to blend those sounds together and then you're going to get a filter, sorry, an amplification section. What's that? A filter is going to sculpt the sound. You're going to change how the sound behaves once it hits the amplifier. And that amplifier is how you're going to get a final result. Okay? As the name implies, your signal is going to be this and once it hits the amplifier, it's going to be this. Okay? Good. Simple. From there, I'm going to press play and I'm going to start to mess around with the oscillators that conforms this, this uh, synthesizer. This synthesizer is cool because it, it's, it, has an, it has three different oscillators that are the ones that are used to create sound. So, first thing is to confirm that we got only one oscillator making sound. And how do you know that? Is by going to the mixer here and you're going to select this knob because you can see it's following oscillator number one and we're gonna up, we're gonna level add some more level to the sound of that oscillator hello Panke, great to see you here as usual we are disgraced by your, <laughs> by your uh, presence in here and for, for those girls and boys, Panke is a really good friend of mine and actually his birthday was a few days ago so you should, uh, well, a shout out to you Panke and happy birthday, I know that it's quite late but wherever so, continuing with this live broadcast, here's what we're going to do. And actually, by the way, he is a, he's a keyboard player, so but keep, uh, keep your eyes open because this is going to be helpful for your uh, dubious uh, synth uh, sound making. So here we go. First, let's see how it sounds like now. We're getting little to no sound. Why? It's because we're using an extremely low frequency. Uh, so I'm going to change the range here, bam, and we're still getting <laughs> little too old. Okay, you're distracting me. Yes, you're old, but you're still around and kicking, so you should be happy. From there, we're gonna click over here just to confirm. Yes, now we're getting it. This is important, there's some boys. Always, always make sure that you select uh, an oscillator that it's turned on. Okay, how do I know that it wasn't on? It's because the light over here was off. <laughs> Simple. So now, we got this first stage of oscillators. We're getting that sound. But it's quite boring. It's not contributing anything to the sound of our song. So this is the purpose of this experiment. I want you to see this area. Can you see this range? Range means how, uh, uh, how high the pitch of our oscillator it's going to be. An oscillator is generating a sound wave, OK? and uh, depending on how high you set it, the higher the pitch is going to be. At this point, we got, we got it in 16, and I'm going to press uh, this key, and it's going to be C. We got that sound. Now let's see what happens if I change it to 8. 4. You get the drill, okay? So, now, let's make this thing a little bit more interesting. Over here, we got waveform, and a waveform is going to tell the synthesizer uh, what kind of shape we want that sound wave to be. Here we're using this guy, which is kind of a sine wave, but then we have this weird shape that looks like a little bit like a sawtooth. So let's see how it sounds in comparison to the others. As a reminder, 
this is how we sound at this point. Now I'm gonna change to a new setting.